Welcome everyone to Digital Marketing Today. We have an exciting show today with Katie Wallace talking about digital marketing content that engages and converts. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to Digital Marketing Today. I'm very excited to have Katie Wallace join me today talking about marketing content that engages and converts. Katie, you are a rock star on LinkedIn. Absolutely love checking, checking your feed each day to see what surprises are going to be there. So let, why don't we start by you telling our audience kind of just a little bit about you and uh, Huck Sustainable mm -hmm. and kind of what you're doing in the business space first, and then we'll kind of get into a discussion about how you really got into producing a lot of video content and really engaging people on LinkedIn. Holy smokes, that's a lot to unpack. Well, yeah. thanks for having me. I'm sure. super excited to be here chatting with you guys. And I, so I run a consulting company, Hug Sustainables, that's the consulting company, and we work with impact-driven companies, typically socially um, impact-driven or environmentally, and we help them find different solutions. Could be anything from recycling to just lessening their waste to diverting their waste to handling their social media, marketing, things like that. So it's kind of a, a diverse group, group that we have, but we're just, I mean, that's what we're focused on is helping elevate impact-driven companies. So what motivated you to, like, dive in, to, in into LinkedIn and start just, like, putting content out? What, what was the main motivating factor? Was it someone that you talked to that kind of, like, motivated you, gave you a kickstart? How did, how did you get started with that? Oh, man. So I actually, so my company came later. So well, I, I take that back. The consulting side to my company came later. It came in 2018, but I started creating videos in 2017 when it first came out. I don't really know why I say it was an accident, but I just remember having, I was working in a B2B job, and I was using LinkedIn because I was having a very high success rate of getting meetings with like CEOs. And if you work in sales, you know how difficult, especially B2B, you know how difficult it is to get through gatekeepers to get to who you need to talk to. So I was just going straight to the CEO and I was able to get meetings that way. And so I was really paying attention to LinkedIn. I didn't know why, um, but I started seeing this one guy from Austin and he was creating videos. And he was just talking about real things that resonated with me. And there were things that I wanted to talk about. And the first video that I ever put out was talking about how I felt like I had to go to my day job, which I was still employed at. Um, and I felt like I had to be a different person. I had to have this different persona, and I had to have my work voice, and I had to like talk on the phone weird, and like you know dress businessy. And it just didn't feel like it was me at all. And that kind of started from there, and I guess like that resonated with a lot of people. And I just kind of kept creating videos from there, I suppose, and cool. content. Right. That was a really long story. So. No, that, no, that's awesome. <laughs> You're like, huh? Uh -huh. I know. I always want to hear why people start because you know we we talk to a lot of particularly small business owners, entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them come to us and start a conversation with us about you know, how do I start, right? I mean, it's so, like, people that have never, like, turned on a camera and sat in front of a camera or never, like, recorded their voice and listened to their voice. <laughs> you it's know? mortifying. I, it's it is. so mortifying. It, well, it's intimidating, but then, you know, at the same time, then even if they try it and they get over that, then the next question is, what do I say, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so a lot of people really struggle with that. So I always like hearing, like, what was the motivating factor behind people actually like starting right just because it, yeah just start and ju and just do it right the Ni oh, nike sorry copyright but you just know do it. yeah oh, right they're going to charge you for that but you know we always encourage people to do that even even clients that we're working with and actually creating content for them um, we actually encourage them to create their own content also and to encourage their customers or users to generate content for them as well. And so a lot of people just don't know where to start. I mean, it's just, you know, this big intimidating thing. So if somebody is in that position, what would be your like top one or two things to tell them about just getting their head around that and, and starting that process? 
I always say go do something that's completely unrelated to anything that you've ever done before or just try something different. I mean, it could be, there was like this one time where I was just, I'm not gonna say I was creatively blocked, but like I just couldn't come up with ideas and topics and it was because I was staring at my laptop all day, every day, and I wasn't doing anything else but just working and I was reminded that I need novelty. So I always say go do something novel. Go do something that will get you thinking about things in a different way or just go have a new experience because that will start to spawn all these different ideas mm -hmm. and like life is where the ideas come from. I mean, that's that's all my content is, is hey, this happened to me. This is what came of it. Like here's the solution. Maybe it'll be helpful for mm -hmm. you. Should I mention the video that you put out talking about this event? <laughs> Oh, oh gosh! Yeah, go ahead. Go, no, go no, ahead. Was, that one was great. It was so. It was so. Funny, but that's though. so real, though. Right? It oh is. It's like it's so real. So she's like, I just had this day, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I can't think. But there's easy bits. The information's in the feed. You're never gonna get this 37 <laughs> seconds back. Sorry, but look at the information. I tried Bye, for 30 right? minutes. <laughs> I tried for 30 minutes just to say I had all the details in front of me. Like this is the event. This is gonna be there. It's gonna be great. Come see it. And I was just like, it's gonna be great. It's going to be fun event. It's going to like, it, I just couldn't get it out. I had no um. But it was funny, man. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I'm still getting notifications. You know, like today I got no. another notification that somebody liked a post I was mentioned in, right? So, so it's funny. just people resonate with that, right? Uh, so like we, when we talk to people, you know, we, we have, we encourage people to do what we call a three-tiered content strategy, right? So there's brand identity, brand voice, and brand reputation, right? Mm -hmm. So the brand identity is like kind of high level, high produced, you know, what you want to put on the front page of your website, yeah. you know, send out to people, that kind of thing. And brand voice is kind of like, you know, video blog content. It still needs to kind of have some production value behind it. And you do a great job with that kind of content as well, like interviewing people, um, doing things like that. Like I would consider this, what we're doing right now, kind of a brand voice type of content, mm -hmm. right? Because we're live streaming. And even though we're going to film and, you know, we're filming and going to produce something that's, you know, a little bit higher production quality, we're, you know, we're using this content as kind of that brand voice. And then brand reputation, I would, you know, it's like just kind of on the fly, like, you know, what's going on? What am I doing yeah. today? But it ties in. the in, car. Yeah. Right. But it ties into like this overall strategy, right? It ties in. It, everything supports each other. And all those different types of content are really important. Um, because they're reaching a lot of different types of audiences or reaching even the same audience but at different times of receptiveness as far as you know how they're going to really engage with that message. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm really impressed with, um, with you and several of the other people we know that really are focusing on putting content out on LinkedIn is the engagement that you get. I mean, and that's one of the topics that we're talking about tonight is engaging and converting, um, and I'm not necessarily talking about converting sales. Conversions can be like, you know, getting the attention of someone that you really want to collaborate with or mm -hmm. somebody that you really want to, you know, make a connection with that you know is going to be a valuable connection or that you can learn from, right? Mm -hmm. But how do, you, um, how do you go about, particularly with like the interviews that you do for Huck Sustainables and you know that content that you put out how do you go about strategizing around your content um, to get engagement to you know to try to get people engaged with that the best way to have people engage with your posts is to go engage with other people's posts and to engage with them via like messaging like I mean it take I mean I've been at it like with just this platform, say LinkedIn, since video came out probably September. September of 2017 was when I put my first video out. And so I didn't really have an agenda when I did that. And so I think maybe it's easier for me just to like keep doing it now that I more so have an agenda because it gave me an agenda to have essentially. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I don't know, it's building community. I mean, people are beating this to death, but right. if you want people to engage with your stuff, I mean, you have to actively really engage with them. Um, you, can't just, you can't just throw your stuff out and expect, like, everyone is going to realize how wonderful you are because you are you. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's all caught up in their own stuff. Um, so what give first, and then you can kind of worry about what's going to come back. That's why a lot of companies, they'll, they, they'll have, they have campaigns in mind for, like, next month. And they're like, hey, can you do something with this? And it's like, 
well, you haven't like, laid the foundation whatsoever to be able to launch this campaign. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it takes a little time to build that up, but once it's going, it's, it's going to go with minimal effort, essentially. That's awesome. It, um, I have a follow-up to ask you on I'm that. Scared. But first of all, we need to take a little short break. Um, so we're going to take just a short break uh, to recognize our sponsors for tonight. And we'll be right back with more from Katie Wallace. So stay tuned. Adults in the U.S. consume five and a half hours of video content every day almost one and a half hours on digital devices. 64% of consumers say that watching a marketing video has influenced a purchasing decision. Adding video to a website landing page can increase conversion by up to 80%. Are you ready to win with video marketing? Now is your chance to learn. Easy steps to add video to your current marketing. Why a three-tiered video content strategy is best. Best practices for live video on social media. Pros and cons of professional versus DIY video. And tips for getting better results with video. Gain the confidence to grow your business and brand with video marketing. Request your speaker today. marketing today. We're having a great conversation with Katie Wallace tonight about marketing content that engages and converts. We were just talking about kind of your strategy or the way that you go about producing content um, that engages people and really gets a conversation going. And it's one of the things I've been really impressed about following you and a little jealous actually about too. <laughs> is how many P I mean it's like it, as soon as you put a piece of content out, I mean there's like usually like hundreds of likes, you know, dozens of comments and one of the things that I think is is really cool and I mean like our, our friend Lila does this, our friend oh, yeah. Tomas does this as well. Uh, Julian, I mean all these all these people that, that we know in common it really takes an effort because you, when someone does engage or comment, then immediately there's that response mm -hmm. and that communicate, you know, that conversation that gets started. And I think that that's something that a lot of people miss. Um, they, you know, they may get a few comments, but then they don't even respond to those comments. And so then there's not any kind of follow-up conversation and there's not any of those like relationships that get started. Mm -hmm. So how important is that and how much time do you spend on that side of it after you produce a piece of content? I, I think engagement is extremely important. I mean, if you're not, in, if you're just throwing something out there and you're just waiting for people to come to it, like you're totally missing, you're missing the point and you're definitely missing the mark. Mm -hmm. So engagement is equally as important as the content that you're putting out and is it providing value? And I think for me, 
Well, also on LinkedIn specifically, it's going. It helps you even on most social media platforms within the first, you know, however long it is, as long as you're engaging and and answering comments and things like that. I mean, the first hour is crucial when it comes to the algorithm and stuff like that. I don't really want to get into that, but mm -hmm. engagement engage, it's, it's extremely important. So I typically will start getting on, engaging, checking all my notification notifications, can't talk, <laughs> and catching as much as I can. And Because mm -hmm. I really do. If people have taken the time to tag me in something, mm -hmm. granted there's like mass taggers and sure. the, whatever, that's fine. But like the people who were like, hey, thought of you, check this out. I go in, read the article, whatever it is, and like take my time to respond thoughtfully. And so I'll do that for about 30 minutes and then I'll put my post out, stay on for 30 minutes and try to catch as much as I can. And then I catch as many comments and things like that as I can throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Messages is a whole other story, but I try to right. catch my comments as sure. much as I can. No, absolutely. I mean, that's a great tip because a lot of people don't think about that. You have to kind of soften the ground a little bit and, you know, and then put content out and then really have some focused time afterwards for at least 30 minutes to an hour afterwards to to really stay focused and, and kind of follow up on that. And a lot of people don't understand that. They'll put something out and then go about their day and then like the next day or whatever, try to catch up and yeah. it's just it's just not as effective. Which is fine, but right, it, I sure. mean, I've heard it equated to like going out and on the sidewalk and just like throwing your flyers up into the air and like hoping that someone's going to catch it. Yeah. But if you're, you know, nobody likes to probably get pulled aside by the people giving you flyers, but if mm. you stop and you're actually being invested in people and take time to <clears> notice the the people as an the person as an individual mm -hmm. versus just throwing your flyers up, they're more likely to check out what's on your flyer. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm interested to know if you have a because we're talking about engaging and converting. So I'm interested to know if you might have kind of a success story or something like that to share with us about putting out a piece of content, getting that engagement, and then that leading to something that was really beneficial for you. Okay, well, let me just give you my LinkedIn spill really quickly because up until almost 100% of my business thus far, which has been almost a year now, has come from LinkedIn, which is really awesome. My mentor, my current mentors have come from LinkedIn, um, and that's from them directly finding me, being like, I give up, I can't find a mentor. Like, people reached out to me, and I really resonated with them, and I, like, they found me, you know? And so I kind of have, like, my little weirdo beacon out, like, calling mm -hmm. all the sustainability weirdos right. to me, and, like, <laughs> and um, I think it's a much easier way than me combing through, you know, all the different, not that I love going to networking meetings, but going to events and doing all this, it's like I have another like signal that I'm sending out that like these are the people that I'm looking for, these are the clients that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, particular partners that do a lot of work with me have come directly from LinkedIn. Like this is all within the past year and a half. Mm -hmm. So I'm still going strong, 100% of my business coming from LinkedIn. That's awesome. So. But I think the key there is like knowing who your target is and then being really specific and asking for those exact people or referrals to those exact people. Mm -hmm. So I think even in like a person-to-person a -person networking situation, a lot of times people just get up and give their 30-second pitch, you know, mm -hmm. or introduction or commercial or whatever you want to call it, and they're talking to the people in the room and they're not really telling the people in the room, this is who I want to meet this week or this month, mm, yeah. right? And not really being specific or intentional about that and Is I think, I think a lot of people do that when they put content out as well or even just post not even video just typical post you know they're just like sharing something to be sharing it hoping that somebody will get some value from it but mm -hmm. they're not you know there's not any intentionality there. I think there's a finesse to it because you have to especially for companies I'll say this for companies and for individuals you need to know yourself, number one. You need to know yourself, what it is that you're trying to accomplish, where you're trying to go. And then also you need to be aware of how you're betraying yourself, obviously digitally. Mm -hmm. But then also, what are you looking for? Because how are you going to ask what you're looking for? And who are the people that you need to be asking it for? Because how are you going to cultivate a message for people that you don't know who they are? That's just kind of throwing something out there and hoping that it sticks, which yeah. that might work too. But also, if you know who you're talking to, well, then it'll make it a lot easier. That's really funny because my first, uh, my nine steps of digital marketing success 
And the first three steps are know yourself, know your audience, and know your objective. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's, uh, Marketers. That's, that's, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so. Um, so we're going to wrap up here in a little bit. But um, I think that what I'd like for you to share with our audience kind of to close with, it kind of goes back to kind of where we started. So if someone is just getting into kind of the digital marketing space, um, if they're just getting into the content space, what would be like the, the number one or two kind of tips you would give, give them just as far as coming up with an overall kind of plan or, you know, starting point, kind of, you know, how, how to get started doing that? I think if you don't already have an idea of where you're going, just start doing something and eventually you'll find your way to exactly where you want to be going. But I hate sounding, sounding woo-woo and esoteric, but just start doing something. Start doing anything. And now, I, I, that's just how it's worked best for me. I never want to say, like, this is what you need to do. But it's how it worked for me because I didn't necessarily want to know where I wanted to go, so I just stayed frozen in the same place. Like, what do I do? What do I do? But I wasn't getting out, experiencing, trying things. How am I going to know if I want to do something if I'm not out there trying it? Mm -hmm. And that led me to meeting the people that I need to meet, so on and so forth. So just start, even if it's not creating content per se, start meeting with people. Just, you know, people that are putting out content that maybe you resonate with, just even if it's uncomfortable, just reach out to them and just kind of don't, don't say pick their brain because apparently people hate that now. You can't say that. Um, but just kind of ask if you can meet and just get to know them and maybe go into it without an agenda and just see what happens because there's the human approach is everything which seems kind of funny that we're like it's like it's okay to act human now everybody we can be human we can we all have the same emotions going on and instead just really just be upfront with where you're at um, so I think that's the biggest thing is is kind of start there if you don't know where it is that you want to be going is that does, is that clear? Yeah, and then I think, <laughs> you know, as, as a as a follow up to that, you know, the the relationship piece of it. So, you know, we met in person first because we were both on a panel discussion of an event that someone else was putting on and hosting, and so they invited both of us to be there, and so that's how we met, mm -hmm. and then we connected online. But there's other people in the audience tonight that I'm meeting for the first time. And we've been connected online, but now we're at an event and we're meeting in person because there is an event, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for people to realize that, yeah, digital marketing is great. You know, having a good online presence is great, but there's also no substitute for kind of the in-person, you know, personal, you know, interaction. And a lot of that happens through events like this. Or, uh, you know, so there's, a, there's I think there's a, um, there's a lot of value to, again, being intentional or having a little bit of strategy behind choosing some certain types of events that people are at that you know that you want to meet. Mm -hmm. And those conversations and those kind of relationships can also lead to a lot of ideas about how to get out there, how to start, you know, so... You know, like I would encourage people that are watching that want to be as successful as you are to find out where you're going to be and events that you're going to be at and go to those events and just start that conversation. And, you know, seriously, I mean, you know, I've done that. You know, I, I've noticed events that people are at. I mean, I'm going to an event on Thursday because I want to be there where those people are because I want to learn something from them and I want to be did able Did I invite to, you to that event? You did, yes. That's going to be a good one, too. It is, right. So I think, I just think, you know, it's important in the conversation that we're having. Yes, we're talking about content. But there's, there's a piece of that where you can view those interpersonal interactions as content as well, right? So if you go to an event that you know people are going to be at, that you want to reach, that you want to start that conversation with, and you go there in the frame of mind and kind of with a strategy in mind about what you want to communicate while you're there in that space, then that can be just as important as something that you put out on LinkedIn or YouTube or 
Facebook or whatever other platform you're on. Totally. They're all just different means to kind of kind of right. do the same thing and like establish that presence. You know how comedians get their material is from their real life. They get out and they live and they do stuff and then they're able to extract what's funny about that because there's some sort of like common denominator. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just going through life and something happens to you and it like sparks this sort of just thought where you go down the rabbit hole and make a note in your phone and just sort of like keep track of, you know, just like different things that maybe you could make a video about. And also if you do it in the moment, that's even better because then you're really fired up about it. <laughs> so that's a kind of a good random place to start as well. Just living and you'll probably get all the content you could ever need. I think that's an awesome place to kind of wrap up. <laughs> that's good advice. <laughs> Just live and then you'll I wish I had something to like, write that down. Yeah, take notes on. I'll have to watch the video afterwards <laughs> and recap, right? Oh, so, gosh. Well, thank you so much, Katie, for, for be agreeing to come and have this conversation. It's really awesome. I hope that it's been valuable for, for the audience. I trust that it has been. Uh, it's been valuable for me, so, uh, so. screw everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Right, okay. So, so we're going to wrap things up. Again, uh, thanks to our audience. Thanks to VentureX for allowing us to use our space for our studio tonight. And stay tuned for our next episode of Digital Marketing Today. See you later. Woo!